Hello YouTubers, my name is X Factor and over the last two weeks you've probably seen several videos on my channel reviewing and unboxing several PC parts because I've been upgrading my entire system. My gaming computer, which is in a brand new case, the Corsair Obsidian 650D, and my recording rendering computer, which I'm still working on uploading and updating some of the software on that side. So this computer retains some of the old parts, the motherboard and the CPU and some of the hard drives and it got some new upgrades in the graphics department and specifically the cooling department. At the end of the day it's about keeping these high-end parts cool so they can function properly and give you the potential to overclock them and airflow is really important that's why I picked this case and more specifically upgraded these fans. There's actually two different types of fans here from Corsair. One's the airflow series, this is 120 millimeter for the back and then this is their static fan series, which is meant to push and pull air through radiators, right? So that's on the H100 now. So how did this all come out? How's the inside look? Is the spaghetti monster gone? And is my PC a proper gaming mullet? Which I'll explain in a second. And here we have the side of the Corsair Obsidian 650D in true Vanna White fashion. And you're gonna notice, that's a solid plate. How does that affect cooling? Does this case run hotter? Actually, no. With the case layout, how modular this case is, and the upgraded Corsair fan line, it's running 10 degrees to 12 degrees cooler, and that's Celsius. That is a big difference. And I was running the same motherboard, same chipset, same CPU cooler, just different graphics cards and different fans before in an HAF932 case, which has a monster fan intake fan right here. So you think with a case with more airflow, it had better cooling. So toolless entry, push down, pull out, away you go. And here's some of the things I like about this case. First and foremost, modular hard drive racks. You can put it on the ground right here. You can leave it hanging. You can put one on the ground here, take this one out. You have several options. At the end of the day, I have a big solid state drive and I have two different hard drives for recording and all the other stuff on my computer goes right here. So why not open this up so this intake can fan can breathe just a little bit more? That's it. On top of that, the upgrades to the Corsair fans that we already talked about is a big difference. Paired together with these two specific EVGA GTX 770 Superclocked with the ACX cooling and that's what makes one of the biggest differences. These cards under full load, I have yet to see 68 degrees Celsius while hitting 1200 megahertz, super clocked. That's pretty impressive. They're literally running 10 to 12 degrees cooler than my EVGA 670 super clocked that didn't have the fancy cooling. And these are 10 degrees cooler than the reference GTX 770s that NVIDIA pumps out as well with a stock cooler. Better temperatures, you have a bigger threshold for overclocking. And that's going to be the next step starting to overclock these to put these at 1300 all the time. So up about 100 megahertz or so. On top of that, we got the uh, Zonar Phoebus uh, from Asus, a, a phenomenal video card, but it's on the expensive side. It's roughly $200 USD. If you catch on sale, it's slightly uh, less. And Asus has some other sound cards that are absolutely phenomenal for less money, starting around 30 or $40. Next, I have a Corsair Modular HX850. And modular means you don't have to have all the spaghetti wires plugged in, only what you need. Some of the lower end uh, power supplies, you have to plug in everything, then you have to deal with the cables and try to play hide the spaghetti. That really sucks. And that leads me to the computer mullet, which is what I've got now. I've got the computer mullet going on. Before I had the spaghetti monster, and thanks to you guys, my viewers, I took one last screenshot of my old computer rig, which had same MOBO, same cooler, different fans, different graphics cards, and it was an absolute mess. It looked like the spaghetti monster ate this thing. It was horrible, and it hurt my airflow. And that's the point. To build this whole thing, taking out the old, putting in some of the new, it took me 45 minutes. That's it, anybody can do it. What took me the longest was all the cable management. Plugging in these cables, making sure they're in the right grommet, making sure they're not crossing wires in the front to give better airflow and a little bit more aesthetically pleasing look for you guys, the viewers, because I care. Uh, and then a little bit LED, some Christmas trees in here, blue, just blue. And there's a, there's a controller on the back here, not the fanciest, but for 20 bucks, how can you resist to put some Christmas lights in your computer, right? So the airflow is phenomenal and that's what it's about. I'm overclocking the CPU, I'm going to overclock 
even more the two clouds that come factory overclock from EVGA. So for me, it's about controlling the temperature in the case and keeping it as low as possible because when things consume more power, they create more heat. More heat is traditionally bad. So just because my cards run at 65, 66, 67 degrees full load doesn't mean yours can't run at 85, 89, 90. There are some older series cards out there, the NVIDIA 400 series and some of the AMD cards. You can cook breakfast on those things. They run in the 90 degree Celsius range. It's crazy, but they're built to perform at those ranges. Every card is different. And that's what I really like about these ACX coolers on the bottom. It's all about the functionality with the cooling fins and the cards. Oh, and this entire case is a hell of a lot quieter than my previous HAF 932 with the H100 and the stock cooler. So we changed the coolers all the way around. Here's those static fans. Again, we're pushing or pulling air through a radiator. We want to use those static fans. This is an airflow fan, a 120. Uh, this is outtake. This is intake. And I'm going to change these to being uh, intake as well. Right now, this is pulling from the inside out. I'm going to have it pull from the outside in and change that up. Uh, just because it's easier to clean the dust off the top than going in here and getting the dust out. So the H100, 4.5 on the 3770K, and I've been really tweaking some of my settings in here, hyper-threading on and off. I read a very interesting article about this specific chipset, the i7-3770K, overclocked at the higher speeds of 4.4 and behind. Uh, the benchmarks say hyper-threading off might help your minimal frame and your average frame which is pretty key in Battlefield 3 and probably Battlefield 4. But again, Battlefield 4 is an alpha, and it's going to be coming out very soon, so we don't know what's best yet. So again, that's a setting that might not stay for very long. I've also been messing with my codecs. Each codec I use while recording via DX Story on a hard drive takes up resources. It costs me frames, 5 to 20 frames, depending on the codec and the quality behind it. So I'm trying to dial that in, too. And some of you guys have noticed the quality of my videos the last couple days has greatly increased or it's been about the same. I'm trying to find something that affects my performance on a minimal side, but gives you guys something very pretty to look at, right? Because when the explosions blow up, you gotta have all that detail. So modular uh, power supply, you can move this power supply or it accommodates the longer power supplies. And again, the modular hard drive space is phenomenal and there's a ton of bays in the front for expansion. I don't need them. Really, I need to throw in my DVD burner, and that's about it. And because I preload Windows on my solid state drive, and I've already got a backup, who really needs a DVD burner these days anyway, for gaming anyway? Not me. I'm a recording and rendering PC. I've got a DVD burner in that bad boy, which I'll showcase in a couple of days as I make tweaks to that. So if you guys have any questions or comments, don't forget to leave them below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, this little summary of my official gaming setup for Battlefield 4. I'm going to slide another SSD before Battlefield 4 comes out and we're going to call it a day. So last but not least, let me get to the mullet part. Why is this a gaming mullet? Well, this is the business in the front, right? Good cable management. <laughs> let me show you what my previous case looked like on the front side. That right there is the party in the back, my friends. This used to be just as bad in the front. So thanks to you guys uh, really giving me some motivation. I did the cable management right. I love this case. I love the fans. There'll be links down below to the fans where you can purchase them because they're, they're, they're a cheap upgrade and they can really help your performance and the way your case breathes. As always, YouTubers, thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this. And my phone's ringing. I got to go.